Well, let's focus on this now. Dire growth figures released yesterday. Our economy shrank by 7% in 2020, despite some signs of recovery in the last quarter. Government, of course, now focusing on public-private partnerships and implementing massive infrastructure projects to grow the economy and, of course, grow jobs. Yesterday, the president launched the proudly South African Buy Local Summit and Expo, virtually, of course, and getting us to buy local is a key element of economic recovery. Well, let's discuss this now with Trade, Industry and Competition Minister Ibrahim Patel. Uh, Minister, thank you very much for your time this evening. Before we jump into proudly South Africa, I have to ask you, as a member of our cabinet, as a member of government uh, with the very distressing uh, images we have seen on the streets of Johannesburg, uh, big questions around uh, police behavior. It is not a very proud moment for us as South Africans to see this. Uh, what is your response as a member of our cabinet? Sally, it's really, uh, these are very, very distressing images, as you say, and um, uh, I hope we can get to the bottom of what has happened here and uh, that would enable us then to, to take the kind of decisions that are necessary. So the first thing is really to recognize how distressing this is to all South Africans and at the same time to, to hope that we can get to the bottom of this as quickly as possible. Absolutely crucial. Let's move on now to, to why we invited you here tonight. So uh, yesterday, proudly South Africa, uh, we had them on and they were explaining they want a mindset change among South Africans, that they understand they cannot ask a South African to buy a more expensive T-shirt just because it's made in South Africa. But when the choice is available um, between a local and an imported item. Choose the local item if it's roughly the same price. I'm wondering, though, if mindset really is the biggest stumbling block to buying local. Isn't it really just about South African prices getting more competitive and how we do that? Sally, it is, uh, it's certainly about prices, but it's not only about prices. We had a, a very, very uh, interesting set of experiences where... At the start of the COVID lockdown, uh, we were producing something like 6 million masks, these medical grade masks. And we were able to work because there were global shortages. Everybody turned to a localization strategy, as, as did South Africa. And we ramped up production quite dramatically. Close to 16 million masks are now produced every month. We have the capability to do that. And as we were producing more, the unit prices were coming down. And that is being replicated in many other sectors of the economy. We produced uh, cars, for example, for global markets. The Ford Ranger Bucky, produced here in South Africa, is sold in 150 other countries across the world. And it's done so price competitively. So what we're looking for is really getting, uh, if we want to grow the economy, we need a market for that. We need a market locally, so those are South Africans buying it, but we also need export markets. And the proudly South African campaign and government's localization is building local capabilities for the local market and the global market. Now, you've raised something important. We've got to address price, quality of goods, the speed with which goods move from factory to, to shop, so those are logistics issues, and of course innovation. People will pay a little bit more for a t-shirt if it's a, if it's a fashionable t-shirt uh, or for a pair of shoes if it's going to last a little bit longer. So South Africa needs to play to our strengths to be able to do mm. that. So I endorse the, the issue that price is important, but so many countries have recognized that even if they have a price disadvantage initially, They've got to build up the kind of industrial capability and the scale of production that assists in bringing prices down. I think you make, that's what we, we seek to do in South Africa. It, it's really important point you're making around localization and how COVID-19 has made many countries focus on that again. And such interesting things developing in Cuba, for example. They have developed their own vaccine. This is a small, poor country, uh, but out of necessity, out of many years of isolation, they've had to innovate so much. And I sometimes worry that we've, we've lost our edge in terms of innovation. Um, I want to drill into one example, and I know it's an area that's close to your heart, and that's clothing, textile, and footwear. That industry has been essentially destroyed by cheap Chinese imports over the last 15 years. And I remember one example that just explained it so well to me, where a newspaper article where uh, a clothing manufacturer said, 
the price of a unit of jeans coming into South Africa is cheaper, the completed item, than I will pay for the raw material here in South Africa. Can we revive clothing, textiles and footwear or should we cut our losses in that area and say, you know what, China has entire cities devoted to socks, for example. We're never going to win that game and rather focus on our strengths. And many people say our strengths are mining and farming. I would, I would offer this thought, uh, Sally. If we abandoned manufacturing, and particularly value-added manufacturing, and we became simply a mining and agricultural economy, we would be really taking price in global markets. In other words, we would remain a very poor nation. So many African countries have as the industrial profile exactly that. They're simply producers of mineral resources and agricultural products. And when we look at wealth creation, it's about how you take the raw materials of nature and transform it through human hands, human ingenuity and innovation, and, and sell it at a premium out there in the market. So if you take clothing and textiles as a good example, yes, we can be producing more raw wool for the rest of the world. But the, the, the wages paid to wool workers, the value addition in the wool industry, is marginal compared to what we can see in Italian fashion or in the, uh, in the new production uh, centers that's gone up in parts of Asia. So South Africa needs to think about how to position ourselves to be in those areas where you have significant return in terms of jobs, the quality of jobs, the profitability of companies and so on by moving up what economists call the value chain. So let me use clothing as an example to illustrate that. Uh, in the production of suits, men's suits, uh, you have a range of skills that are required and, and, and product innovation come into it. And those suits sell for anything from uh, a, a thousand rand to 15,000 rand or more. Mm -hmm. Where you position yourself in that is the quality of your economy, is the size of your economy. The GDP is a reflection of that value add. A different way of talking about gross domestic product is the value add in your industry. So we would be taking the low road of development if we simply sought to be a mining and agricultural producer on its own. It's using those natural resources and transforming it through manufacturing processes that real value is added. Very briefly, we are running out of time, but in the next year or so, where do you hope to see the best progress in moving this buy local campaign forward? Sally, uh, cu currently South Africa imports about 1.1 trillion rand of goods, excluding oil. So oil is a difficult one because we're not a significant producer of oil besides Sassol. By the way, a good example of innovation. And so we're aiming over the next five years, so starting this year, to claw back something like 20% of that. And it's in many different products. If you take cooking oil as an example, and it's a time when many South Africans are cooking now, they have come back from work. Cooking oil, we, we buy 9 billion rands worth of cooking oil from the rest of the world. And that's an opportunity for us to localize. Because we have some of the raw materials here, soya bean production, we have some of the processing plants, and so we've identified 42 products together with the business community that we say we're going to roll up our sleeves and really work on localizing it. And I want to end by giving an example to come back to an issue you raised about Cuba and its innovation. South Africa has its example. Uh, during COVID, one of the critical instruments required when you get to hospital is what is called the CPAP mask uh, or CPAP ventilator. It's a thing put around your face that helps the inflow of oxygen. A year ago, we had no capability to produce those machines. Today, we have produced 20,000 CPAP ventilators that are used across hospitals right through South Africa. So we need to do more of that and scale more of that up in order to really harness the spirit of South African uh, enterprise to create jobs and, and build our economy. All right. Well, thank you very much. I look forward to getting progress updates from you as you go forward in your buy local campaign. Thank you very much, Minister, for your time this evening. Trade industry.